Jim Northern. You guys having fun? I'm ready to keep this going. You ready for your headliner? All right. You may have heard of his uh, CDs. You may have seen him on Tonight Show. Please welcome to the stage Georgia's own, Mr. Tim Wilson. Round of applause for Andre Holloway. Give it up for him there one more time. The lovely Tim Northern. Round of applause for him. Like the shirt, sir. Shot your mattress for that one, didn't you? We got a, we got a pillowcase set at home. Looks just like that damn shirt. Uh, you don't want to dress up for the show. No, fuck it. Just order to mow the lawn in. Screw it. <laughs> Still got Roundup around his ankles down here. I think you can let her go, sir. I think she's going to stay. That bugger got a Motel 6 coupon smoking in his pocket right now, Mount. Is that your daddy or a business trip? See? <laughs> Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. How you doing? Getting a handle on the crowd here. Like this shirt, sir. Looks like the one Greg Brady had on when Bobby got lost in the Grand Canyon, sir. That's a, that's a fashion fucking statement. <laughs> he can bowl 200 and nothing right now, can't you, sir? Two. Look like Buddy Holly, the, the steroid fucking years over there, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what the capacity is in here. We'll do up close to a couple of dozen this show, so should have went back to my room done this damn show. <laughs> How you doing? That's the worst toupee I've ever seen in my life right there. So have to get with Cy Sperling and get your money back on that one. Someone to talk about hair. I got 12 hanging on here. If I ever get to heaven, I'm going to find the hair angel and whip his ass. Does yours fell out symmetrically? Looks good. I got that mange shit. You know what I mean? This went, this just sucks. Can we smoke this show, Steve? Just no smoker? Good. I hate a damn no smoking show. Half the crowd wants to smoke and they can't, so they're pissed, and the other half ain't got no sense of humor to start with. <laughs> Some of those we want to breathe and live assholes. Are we going to be able to breathe? Fuck no, you ain't going to be able to breathe. It's a nightclub, for Christ's sake. You want to breathe? Go to church. <laughs> That's why we all started smoking, so we could knock out the nursing home years. <laughs> I don't want to wind up being the old fucker at Golden Corral bitching about the salad bar. <laughs> Those cucumbers just don't look fresh. <laughs> They're not fresh. It's Golden Corral, for Christ's sake. It's three ninety nine. dollars you can eat. Get your tennis ball walker ass away from the buffet. Hustle up, waitress. Everybody's paying attention to you, not paying attention to me. <laughs> Starting to like this crowd. Had an embalming fluid group in their first show. Shit. Had to get the humor defibrillators out after their ass. Get a sense of humor. Clear. <laughs> you know, these are the late night people. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> Calm down. Quit talking to me. You ain't got Tourette syndrome over here. Do you think? If I say something to him, he ain't going to talk to me all fucking night. Do one damn mattress joke and the fucker won't shut the hell up. <laughs> Ma'am, this ain't some sort of hostage situation or anything, is it? You're here on your own free will right now. You weren't trying to get into the Walgreens and the dark van pulled up. Just check it. Youngster, how old are you, sir? 22. Don't know shit. You're in here looking for a cosigner right now, ain't you, sir? 22. Fuck, I got underwear. 22. Probably on. <laughs> How old are you, sir? 42. Me and him used to do a thing called go outside and play. <laughs> it was like a weird thing. <laughs> you lived in a house, and there was a road in front of your house you could actually cross without a booster seat or an eggshell bicycle fucking helmet. <laughs> and there were people who lived in that house who actually knew you. And you'd knock on the door and go outside and play with their kid till it got dark with a thing called a stick. And then your mom would come to the door and say, it's time for a thing that we used to call dinner. That was way back when women would do a thing called cook. And there'd be like four or five pots on the stove. Wasn't just some lasagna they were proud of from the Publix or some shit. We used to ride our bikes to the damn store by our damn self. Be six, seven, eight miles away from home. Parents didn't give a damn. 
Where are them kids at? Hell, I don't know. Glad they're gone. Be nine years old. Going to get you a carton of Marlboro 100s and a penthouse forum magazine. And the guy at the store, you boys need some lighters with them cigarettes? <laughs> Say, no, we got daddy's lighter. <laughs> well, you better change clothes before you get home. They'll smell smoke. You'll get a thing that we used to call an ass whipping. That was something they quit issuing about 22 fucking years ago, sir. 22. When you get a beer gut and no hair, you're going to understand how much 22 gripes my ass, sir. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than fucking youth. <laughs> we didn't have them bicycles like you little assholes had. Flip around, flying, going over a cliff, upside down, all that bullshit. We had to hold on with two big toes on a lug nut, didn't we, sir? Had a sissy bar, banana seat. Easy rider handlebars. You go flipping that damn thing around, you get a scrotum sack on your reflector. <laughs> 22. <laughs> what, so you couldn't afford a babysitter? Fuck. <laughs> Anyhow, it's just like a last supper gone bad or some shit now here. <laughs> One guy, what, two, three, four, three guys, 38 dates. It's like a, it's like a bad eliminate fuck up or something going on here. Peggy Sue, I pay the gold hill on Peggy Sue. Can we guess we can smoke. Everybody's down on tobacco. The greatest four mines of World War II smoked. Roosevelt smoked. Churchill smoked. Eisenhower smoked. Douglas MacArthur smoked. Nicotine won World War II. <laughs> then we started smoking reefer in Vietnam. Got our ass wet in that war. But <laughs> well, we kind of won this last one, though, because we're smoking crack now. It's me. We're going to rape, rob, pillage, steal, shoot, plunder, and steal stereos better than we ever have. We may not whoop Bin Laden, but he won't have shit to listen to when it's over. <laughs> Before they hung Hussein, they pulled him out of that hole with a big long beard. I went, damn, I didn't realize the Oak Ridge boys were playing in Iraq. <laughs> Giddy up, ooh, shuck, ooh, shuck, ooh, <laughs> This little fucker don't know who the Oak Ridge boys are. <laughs> Did they open for Incubus? <laughs> My ass is Incubus. Everybody wonders why these terrorists got such a shitty attitude. Because their music sucks. That's why. Enough might want to cut your wrist, strap on dynamite, and drive into an embassy somewhere in it. Sir. I'd have a shitty attitude, too, if my dates are all dressed like ninjas. <laughs> is that your girlfriend or mine, Rajesh? I cannot tell, Mr. Team. <laughs> Arabic guys. Damn, just, just a little, just a hair insecure with the damn women. Ugh. Got them wrapped up in shower curtains and shit. <laughs> we shouldn't bomb them. We ought to make a wave of hooter girls over there. That's what we ought to do. Do some hardcore psychological warfare on their ass. Be burning up in the desert. Here comes little Tiffany in orange shorts going, y'all want some more chicken wings? <laughs> I don't want to sit here and pick on Hooter girls. I mean, Lord knows I'm practically the CEO of that corporation at this point. <laughs> don't ever marry a damn Hooter girl. Silicone and good food are rarely in the same building. You marry a hooter girl, you're going to wind up eating hot pockets the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> hot pockets. <laughs> Some woman ever cooked me a hot pocket, she can pack her shit in a hot pocket and get the fuck out. <laughs> and take those orange shorts with you. Y'all okay over there? Getting everything? Getting French fries? It's always good to eat French fries while I'm telling fucking jokes. <laughs> have to come back here and do the Heimlich maneuver on your ass back there. Man. Yeah, I want a fucking French fry, sir. Calm down, sir. <laughs> I'm just up here trying to raise kids, sir. <laughs> it's two in the morning. You fuckers really want to see my ass, you'd have shown up the first two shows. <laughs> Y'all are just here because everywhere else is closed. I realize that, sir. Don't be doing French fry humor, sir. I, I just I mentioned a fucking French fry. Let's get over it. You're not Iraqi, are you? <laughs> Don't need to start the car or anything, do I? <laughs> just checking. Oh, now I'm an asshole. Okay, fine. 
I'm up here damn trying to tell the jokes, fucker wanting to throw French fries at my. You can't get a crowd worth a fuck anymore. What else? See, a lot of you people really don't even understand my job. Y'all think my job's coming here and tell you a bunch of jokes. You know my real job is? To be a bigger dick than you are, sir. That way on the way home. I'm glad I'm not hooked up with that hillbilly son of a bitch. You might run around with a mattress shirt and got Tourette syndrome, but you're not as bad as that fucker. Then you'll get laid later, sir. You'll see my name on that sign out there in about six months. I got laid last time I saw that, eh, so. That is my job. But you're going to have to bring me something to work with here. I can't do it all my damn self. Help me help you. Anyhow, I smell Democrats in this room. <laughs> you think I don't know a fucking Democrat table when I see one? You know, those French fries paid for, did you get that on a government fucking giveaway program? I didn't realize we took WIC stamps here for the... Club. <laughs> Democrats. John Kerry was in the military. Fuck Lee Harvey Oswald was in the military. <laughs> Benedict Arnold was in the military. Jimi Hendrix was a paratrooper. <laughs> My cousin was in Vietnam. Hell, he's framing houses in North Georgia. I don't want that asshole being president. He might make a pretty good FEMA director. Because <laughs> well, he never shows up, he knows quite a bit about show horses. Which, of course, was George W.'s criteria for FEMA director. The only, only FEMA I saw in New Orleans was Kafima Jackson. She was holding a big armload of huggies going, where are those motherfuckers? <laughs> Felt bad for the people in Mississippi lost their houses. But I didn't really feel all that bad about it. Cause hell, I almost lost a house on a blackjack table in Biloxi, Mississippi. <laughs> those people didn't give a fuck. I didn't see a $2,000 credit card and a Red Cross truck waiting on my ass when I limped out of Mississippi. And I specifically remember when I doubled down on that 11 and that Mississippi woman hit me with a two. I think I said, dear God, if you ever get a chance to blow these assholes away with a hurricane. <laughs> so I'm starting to think it was me. <laughs> so if Tunica ever gets hit by a locust, you'll know it was me losing my ass on a let it ride table or some shit. To like this crowd. <laughs> you always got to have one, you know, you got to have a little bit of controversy. Fucker throwing the French fries at you. <laughs> Good luck with it, ma'am. What is charity date night, Saturday fucking night, ma'am? <laughs> Go out with any damn body on a Saturday night, won't you, ma'am? <laughs> Whoever will damn throw down for French fries, you'll go out with that fucker. <laughs> Calm down, sir. If I'm taking an ass weapon, sir. I'm going to make it worth it, sir. I ain't getting my damn car blown up and tires cut and shit over a French fry joke. You know, fuck. You're not standing up, are you? Let me explain something to you, sir. I've been in so many comedy fights over a 25-year period, I, can, I don't remember all of them. Here's all I know now. I don't want to win. I want you to whip my ass because we're going to fucking court. <laughs> Come knock my ass out. I'm surprised I ain't going on a neck brace right now, sir. I had a little Midas kid, a 22-year-old kid in a Midas muffler parking lot wanted to beat my ass the other day. I told him, I'm a suit waiting to fucking happen. Come hit me. I just got back from Iraq. I said, well, if you'd have been whooping as much ass over there as you want to do here at Midas muffler, we'd be winning that fucking war. <laughs> 22. What you going to do, bitch? <laughs> I said, I'm 46. I'm a son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't do all that prison talk bullshit. Go to prison. Gonna be a thug. Be, go to prison. Hell, my granddaddy was, damn, damn, shit, he was a bootlegger. Fucker did two years, long time ago. Back when prison wasn't a fucking hotel. <laughs> I got a picture of my great granddaddy. No shit. He's sitting there getting his picture took. He's got a coat up to here. Button, hat on. If you look down on the bottom, he's got stripes on his fucking pants. He's sitting there with my, my great grandmama looking real embarrassed. You know? <laughs> Fuckers in jail for bootlegging. That was making liquor. <laughs> Where are you from, sir? Atlanta, Georgia? Hey, hey, French fry man. I'm going to say this one time, okay? I don't give a shit. There's 32 people in here. Those people back there behind you paid to get in. I'm going to entertain them. I don't care how long it takes. 
But I'm not going to allow you to sit and talk and fuck up the show for the people around you. That's a fact. That's a fucking fact. I'll have your ass outside so fucking fast it'll make your head spin. Uh-oh, he's drunk. There's the problem. <laughs> it's okay, ma'am. He's just inebriated. What's your name, sir? Stuart. Stuart. Where do you work, Stuart? What's your boss's name over there, Stuart? <laughs> I am. If I'm the boss, that place is going under pretty fucking soon. It's on there. Security table six. See, the waitress don't give a fuck about him. She's worried about card man getting another beer up here. <laughs> don't bring him anymore. Well, go ahead and bring him. Bring him all he wants. I don't give a fuck about him. Sit here and mess up my late show. I could be home with my wife and bad them getting laid. No, I got to sit here and talk to some fucker drunk. Am I on some sort of blooper show or some shit today? <laughs> this ain't some sort of leftover real estate seminar from the Marriott or some shit, is it? I flipped four houses in two months. I have a $60,000 positive cash flow thanks to Ted's tapes. Our lifestyle has changed. Now we can go out on Saturday night and eat fucking french fries. <laughs> Shoot birds at the comedian. I don't even think I'm an American anymore. You know? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the number one record in America is. I don't know who the heavyweight champion of the world is. How many people here know who the heavyweight champion of the world is? That shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? It ain't. Oh, I care. I mean, it's probably, I think it's those Russian brothers. They're still fighting over who's the champ. See, you don't get. The Florida Gators? Well, they're national champion football team. Pretty soon, Ohio State will beat them in something. I don't know what. It, it may be chess. I know. I used, to hate, I used to hate Florida when they had Spurrier. Well, he stood around in a lesbian golf hat going. <laughs> Steve Spurrier, he won the Heisman Trophy, ma'am, when all the black guys were in Vietnam. That's when it, <laughs> well, the black guys were in Vietnam in 66, ma'am. We went to Vietnam and technically in, during Kennedy worked their way up. They were <laughs> you ever have one of those days you... You ever have one of them days you go to the medicine cabinet, you pull out the Tylenol, ma'am, and you actually hope somebody's tampered with it? Give me. It's the kind of day I'm having the fucking day. <laughs> well, it's late. I'll give you three more. All righty. You know my favorite football coach? Bobby Bowden. Not because he's a great winner, ma'am, because he's an excellent loser. They ask him, Coach, you sucked out there today. We did, we did, but we got good kids. Our quarterback couldn't keep nothing on his stomach. He had diarrhea at halftime. We got him a bottle of Capectate. He played a good second half. He had the white spot on his pants. <laughs> First half, he had that brown spot on his pants. We got those off. Coach, your team stole every shirt out of a Dillard's. They did, they did, but they're good kids. <laughs> they was trying to get their mama something for Christmas. Didn't realize they were in the men's department. Really? <laughs> Calm down, sir. <sighs> the only reason you're still here, sir, is because I realize you're a little drunk. <laughs> Otherwise, your ass would be at the 290. Oh. Say it again. Uh-oh, security showed up now. <laughs> that fucker will be hushing here in a minute. See, sir, that's why I'm against fucking immigration. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where are you from, sir? Where are you from? Where at in New York? Were you born in New York? Don't bullshit me, sir. I lived in Queens. Jackson Heights, Queens? Where are you from? Where in Queens? Well, let me explain one thing to you, sir. This is the fucking South. We only ask two things. A, that you bring a fan. And B, that you show some fucking manners. That's the only difference. New York people are nice people. If I wanted to talk to New Yorkers, I'd have had my manager book me there. Okay? Fuck New Yorkers. Okay? They can kiss my ass. Okay? 
I lived in Jackson Heights, Queens for three years. I can speak fluent Chinese and fucking Spanish now. <laughs> lived off Northern Boulevard. I know all about Queens. Queens sucks a dick about this fucking big. Okay? It's kind of like Roswell Road over and fucking over and over again. If I want to feel like I'm in Queens, I'll go tell jokes at the ca check cashing fucking place, okay? Don't tell me about Queens. But in the South, we're assholes. We are, but we have manners. You walk up to a Southerner, say, hi, how are you today? He say, fine, how are you doing? If he don't say, fine, how are you doing back? Fuck you, motherfucker. That's the way it goes. Right now, you're interrupting my show, and I don't fucking appreciate it. So that's about enough from you, and I'll hush about it, too. I do like the Yankees. <laughs> Took my wife to New York about, what, six months ago. Well, no, hell, it was about two months ago. She wanted to go to the most expensive place in New York to eat. Took her to a New York Yankees game. <laughs> Bought her ass a $9 hot dog and a $4.20 ounce Coca-Cola. She was impressed. <laughs> New Yorker. Come in here and fuck up my show. Put up with that bullshit. D, 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 where you uh, for, for, where you fucking from? D, Queens. Eating French fries, fucking up my show. That shit ain't right. What else? <laughs> Y'all have to forgive me. I'm sick of white people. <laughs> you don't get up fucking here, a bunch of white ass people. We're going to house about two years. Do an addition on the front of your house. Watch white guys come over disguised as construction people. When it's over, you'll hate white people. We talk a good game. Oh, you must not have called us. Hell, I did call you. I called white ass plumber. Look you up in the yellow pages under W. White ass plumber. Trying to get a white guy on the phone. Can I speak to somebody that remotely knows anything about anything? I'm sorry he's not here right now. But if you leave your name and number, I can get him on his beeper. He's still at work. I go, ma'am, it's 11.30 at night. That fucker's on a cell phone getting a lap dance somewhere, ma'am. Your husband sucks, ma'am. White guy's got a beeper and a cell phone. He drive around in a company truck lining up jobs. Hey, we're covered up. Shit, we about got all we can do. I can't believe I'm over here looking this right now. Damn, we'll lose money on that. We are covered damn up. I go, yeah, you're covered up in Taco Bell wrappers. That's what you're covered up in. When's the last time you seriously saw a white guy with a hammer in his hand out sweating somewhere? When's the last time you broke a sweat, sir? Six months. Don't sit here and bullshit me, sir. Who actually does the majority of the construction work in the United States of America? Let's all say it together. The Mexican guys. That's who actually does the damn work. I know it's here. You want anything done right at your house. You get a Mexican man to show up at your house. He won't show up. You got to go pick him up. But, <laughs> but he's waiting on your ass out there. Him and 200 friends of his hiding behind a grocery store somewhere, begging to go to damn work. And there's always some white-ass cop with a crew cut and a flat jacket. What the hell is going on with your damn border patrol? He'll drive right by a white guy with a cardboard sign and says, I won't do shit. Please give me a dollar. <laughs> well, he's a citizen. Think about it. Name me one thing, thousands of years old, still standing, that a white guy ever built. <laughs> Stonehenge, God bless you, sir. Twelve rocks standing up, six in between, and to this day, don't know what the fuck it's for. <laughs> Never saw a white guy at a pyramid. Why? Because it had to be exact. See a white guy at a pyramid. Hell, them rocks look close enough. Shit, we'll caulk it. <laughs> Let's get some lunch. I actually think Stonehenge was a couple of white boys taking a shot at a pyramid. <laughs> Got about 12 rocks drug up there. Fuck it. Let's build some kind of temple or something. <laughs> if we had some Mexicans here, we'll get a roof on this damn thing. <laughs> I bet it turns out it was a concession stand at a fucked up racetrack or something. <laughs> NASCAR fans in here, though? Yeah. Perfect example of what I'm talking about. 
Time to go to Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol? You damn right. We going down Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol? You damn right. We going down Bristol. Y'all going to Bristol? You damn right. We going down Bristol. Wednesday night they get pimento cheese sandwiches together. Turkey sandwiches, bologna ass sandwiches. Get twelve cases of beer. Make sure you get four bags of ice. They're traveling Thursday. Get set up Thursday night. Qualifying's Friday. Bus race is Saturday. Real race is Sunday. It rains. Oh fuck! We're staying till Monday. <laughs> Takes Tuesday to get home. Then Wednesday you gotta get ready to go down to Talladega. That's one week. About 350,000 white fuckers didn't do shit. <laughs> and the next time you go to Bristol, if you see a Mexican sitting next to you, I'll give you $5. <laughs> they're taking our jobs. No, they're not. They just don't give a fuck about Greg Biffle. <laughs> Dale Jr., he left his stepmama's team, which already tells me he's got more balls than his daddy. <laughs> Don't be talking about Dale Sr., motherfucker. <laughs> Dale Jr., he ain't got no girlfriend. Pretty soon he's going to run in Japan, and that Japan race, fall in love with a short Asian lady named Yoko, about this tall. They're going to have a baby named Fujimoto Earnhardt. <laughs> he's going to drive Toyota and break all his granddaddy's records. Everybody's going to, Dale Sr. would roll over in his grave. Go, no, ma'am, he's going to egg roll over <laughs> in his grave. <laughs> Can I buy my cigarette from you there, sir? You're killing me over here. Got my damn brand just sitting there looking at it. If I was going to smoke, I should have bought the equipment. I guess I ain't seen this much cleavage since I spent Easter with Ted Kennedy. You're killing me. <laughs> Can't fucking concentrate up here. I think this is the crack problem in Ackworth right here. There it is. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm running for dictator 2012. Tim Wilson for Benevolent Dictator. Some shit's going to change. <laughs> First thing to go, spandex bicycle fucker. He's gone. <laughs> He's going to be able to ride down a two-lane road without crossing the center line, taking out a family of six so Ian can keep his thighs looking good. Okay. <laughs> Next thing to go, Iraqi car bombs. Not going to be any cars in Iraq when I'm dictator. They're going to have a large mule bomb problem when I get through with their ass. We may not get out of there with any oil, but damn it, we're going home with some scrap metal. <laughs> when I become dictator, no queens fucker showing up at my late show. <laughs> you come to the first two shows, nobody from out of town on the late show. <laughs> Too damn late to get into a bunch of that shit. <laughs> See Gangs of New York, sir? Yeah. That, that was a damn good movie. I like that damn movie. I actually like Queens okay. I just didn't like telling jokes there. They slept pretty soundly without my ass being there. You know what I'm saying? Nice people. They don't shut the fuck up a lot, but they're nice. <laughs> that was me dragging it back out. Sorry, sir. <laughs> it's the asshole in me. It's the southerner. I can't help it. You know, he lets it go. Everything's fine. I got to bring the shit back up. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of the way it works. <laughs> Making a Democrat laugh. Damn, what day is it? Somebody write this shit down. <laughs> no, that's your wife. No, this is your wife? No wonder she's sitting on the opposite side of the table. <laughs> well, uh, Ma'am, are you their counselor? What's the deal? <laughs> You're their interpreter? <laughs> Good luck with it, ma'am. When you're on a rooftop ready to jump, ma'am, we're with you. Don't do it. We we know it's we know it's him, ma'am. We just do. What else? I watched enough dog the bounty fucking hunter. They just damn run a marathon of that shit. <laughs> they pray and cry more than Jim and Tammy Baker on that damn show. If I ever skip bail, that's who I want chasing me though. <laughs> who is it? Well, it's either the cops or the bass player from Molly Hatchet. He's here with a roller derby woman and two Ferris wheel ticket takers. They're here to, to take your ass to the pokey in a Lincoln Navigator. Dog's wife in a bathing suit will just about ruin Hawaii for you. You know what I mean? I'm surprised the damn Hawaiian tourism group hadn't got on them about something. She's one of the few women in the world who could actually fuck up Dollywood. And that's, that's saying something. So. Well, you know who's the stupidest son of a bitch that ever lived? Michael Vick. Rock stupid. 
$130 million. Gave up $130 million so he could dogfight in his coven's backyard. That shit ain't right. You know what they ought to do? They ought to get Michael Beck taken to his cousin's yard. So here's what we're going to do, Mike. We're going to bring in all the money you fucking lost in, in dollar bills. It's going to be in rider trucks. It's going to take a minute. <laughs> we may have to go to your cousin's next door neighbor's house to get the fucking trucks into the yard. That's how much money you're going to fucking lose, okay? Being a dip shit. You know, he's dumber than Tyson. At least Tyson had some sexual gratification. You know what I mean? I mean, Mike Vick's got a rape kit in the backyard for dogs. Great. <laughs> the hell? I'm telling you, a spaceship landed in 85 or some shit. I don't know what happened. And then they say, okay, then across the street in the pasture, we're going to bring in Arthur Blank's money, your best friend in the world, who all you had to do was tell him the truth early. He probably could have bought you out of it, you know, if you wouldn't have lied to his fucking face. We're going to sit here for six months and watch his fucking money be brought in by trucks. Shit, we'll be here longer and you're going to be in prison watching that fucker's money come in. You know what I'm waiting to see? It's going to happen on ESPN. There's a Vietnamese linebacker who plays for the Cowboys. He's at home right now going, oh, fuck, I hope he don't hear about them cats. <laughs> We've lost the crowd. Everybody's pissed. <laughs> you need anything else, sir? Fight breaks out, you're on my team, sir. <laughs> you can just tell he's been in a few. <sighs> I have my damn ankles all fucked up. I got a knee in. Uh, I lost a damn anterior cruciate ligament in that knee when I was 18. So I went in show business. Otherwise, I'd be playing for the fucking Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been fighting roosters or some shit. They'd have, <laughs> they'd have got me for 80 million. Some, some shit. <laughs> You know, I mean, damn, the name of the South Carolina team is the Gamecocks. You know, and Pete, you know, I'm sure Pete is pissed about that, but, you know, fuck. You know, it's fine to kill chickens, I guess. Don't be fucking with dogs. <laughs> See, rural people don't think of animals the same way that city people do. You know, a rural kid grows up here. You stay away from that junkyard to get that dog over there. You better not be around that fucking dog. He eats your ass up. If I see y'all around that dog, you get bit by that dog, I'm going to kill you. That kind of shit. You know, oh, fuck, we're going to get around the dog. You know, my grandmama used to drown cats because she had 25 fucking cats. You know, she didn't want to turn, you know, go skits or some shit. It's enough fucking cats. You know, she had 10 kids. Fuck a cat. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm from a different planet than you people. I'm from a planet about 40 miles, 90 miles down the road. Columbus, Georgia. That's where I'm from. It's where Coca-Cola was actually invented, 1886. Started out putting cocaine in the Coca-Cola, which is why they started putting straws in the top of the bottle. See, <laughs> you're going to learn some shit at my show, ma'am. <laughs> Dane Cook don't give a fuck about you, sir. I'm worried sick about you. He's trying to make a payment on a Learjet. I'm trying to make a payment on a Lear truck cover. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Why only? I'll admit it in public. Damn it, I'm a Bee Gees fan. There, I said it. You know you're secure in your masculinity when you can blow into a rest area at 2 in the morning with staying alive blowing out your driver's side window. <laughs> Knowing good and well George Michael is waiting on your ass in the men's room there. <laughs> Humming Fanny, be tender with my love. <laughs> Remember that song, sir? Fanny, be tender with my love, Bee Gees. 1976. Top 12 record. Where were you in 76? Wasn't born yet. I was being born. I don't remember that song. I was being born. Well, it was a hit for like six months. So you might remember it when you were five months old. I was being born. Nothing happened till I was born. <laughs> Nothing really good happened since you were born. <laughs> Hell, we used to ride around on 32 cent gasoline. You get here and the shit's 350. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. I don't remember Abe Lincoln, but I read a fucking buck. Come on, sir. <laughs> Hound Dog was a hit before I was born, but I can hum the damn thing. You better get a Bee Gees album. You married yet? You better get a Barry White album. <laughs> if you're going to a marriage counselor, if a Barry White album won't fix it, fuck, it ain't fixable. 
You'll get pregnant listening to a Barry White album. They ought to put condoms in the CD box on them damn things. I never seriously thought about sleeping with a roast beef sandwich <laughs> until I heard Barry White do the Arby's commercial. Oh, look at that cheese. <laughs> Going down on that roast beef. Oh, baby. <laughs> you better get a Marvin Gaye box set. Can't get laid to Marvin Gaye, you are gay. I know you're not gay. There ain't no way in hell a gay guy would have on that shirt, so it ain't going to happen. I'll go to court and swear in front of them 35 juries. That fucker's heterosexual. <laughs> Marvin Gaye, the greatest R&B singer that ever walked in the face of God's earth. James Brown can kiss my ass. Otis Redding can kiss my ass. Marvin Gaye was the man. Had a song called, whoa, mercy, mercy me. All things ain't what they used to be. Not one time in the song does the man ever say the word love, sex, baby, booty, nothing. It's about fish with mercury in its damn stomach, and women are dropping their clothes fast they can get the damn things up. <laughs> when you can sing a song about a landfill, and women are getting naked about it, that's an R&B singer. <laughs> Marvin Gaye could have sung a song called Septic Fucking Tank, and it would have been a hit. Septic tank. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He could do a Michael Vick dog fighting song. Fucker would be a hit. Take that collar off. <laughs> we'll try to stop the bleeding with these hundred dollar bills. <laughs> Take that collar off. Marvin Gaye, you're trying to get laid to jaw rule or some shit, ain't you, sir? So like a so like a Let's get with the program. You from Atlanta? Born here? No. <laughs> when were you born, sir? What year? 85. Fuck, you don't even remember when Atlanta used to suck in baseball, do you, sir? <laughs> you were six when we started winning games and shit. Well, I remember... <laughs> I remember when a good church league team would give Atlanta a good run for the money. <laughs> Shit. Back in the Mike Lum years. Remember those years? <laughs> the worst baseball player to ever play for the Atlanta Braves name was Paul Casanova. He played during the during Hank Aaron's period. He was the later period. He was the worst catcher that ever lived. He'd go to see sick kids at Grady. He'd go, hey, I'm going to hit you a home run today. He'd go, yeah, right. You foul tip a ball. My ass will get well. <laughs> You lay down a good bunt, this whole wing will get out of the fucking hospital. <laughs> I remember when Joe Torrey, the coach for the Braves, or for the Yankees, was our catcher. That's how old I am, sir. You're going to learn some shit at my show, sir. <laughs> well, we'll get to get to our, I mean, I like country music in here at all. Well, if you don't like it, you damn sure better start liking it. It's about the only thing I can play. the night off. Hold on, the Secretary of Treasurer of the crowd has something to fucking say. What was it, sir? New York, New York guys love country music. <laughs> sir, there's not, there's not even a country station in New York. But there used to be. But that fucker's gone. You know what ruined it? That rhinestone movie with Sylvester Stallone. That was it. Him and Dolly Parton went up there and fucked it up. That's it. Baby got back, baby got back, get jiggy with it, get jiggy with it, who let the dogs out, who? I think we know who let the fucking dogs out, <laughs> hip hop, put it to country music, go to Waffle House about two in the morning, throw something in the jukebox, will you, back that ass up, That's the actual lyrics of the song, man. 
mean to be crude. Skinner fans in here at all? Skinner fans there? Needle in the spoon, indeed. You're singing. Here we go. Here we go. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. songs in the same. I'm gonna do that fucked up chord. <laughs> always love weird chords. Here's what I call a soap opera chord. This one, a soap opera is just about to go to commercial. You're not fucking Bill, are you? All Stevie Ray Vaughan songs in the same. I'm not a musician. If I was a musician, I'd be a bus outside. I'd be getting laid after the show. <laughs> Comedian. I'll be with Queens Bucker at Denny's later. <laughs> Going to sleep on us back there, are you? Let the losing back there, man. All right. I've got those queens fucker bucking with me at my own show blue. Oh, oh, Travis, Travis Tritt songs in the same. Hey, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All Neil Young songs in the same. Why did we go to war? What are we fighting for? I go, way fuck your Canadian. <laughs> There's 12 of y'all over there. All Bruce Springsteen songs in the same. Go to New Jersey. They love Bruce Springsteen. It's the boys. It's the boys. It's New Jersey. But every song he ever sang was about how much New Jersey fucking sucked. You ever notice that? <laughs> I gotta get the fuck out of New Jersey. I gotta find a girl in a car. I gotta get the fuck out of the state. New Jersey's killing me. And there was all Greg Allman doing that shit to Georgia. Anybody who ever saw the Allman Brothers knows exactly what I'm talking about. Greg don't give a damn if you're at the show. He could be playing in Athens. You know, it is great to be in Augusta. All the trailer girls. Oh, we love Greg. We love him. We know him. I go, ma'am, Greg don't know his bass player. Get the fuck away from here. <laughs> Greg Allman, there's a rock star for you. Everybody sitting around waiting on Van Halen to come back or some shit. I mean, Greg never had a hip fucking replacement. Eddie Van Halen getting over a hip replacement. Half a tongue or some shit. Yeah, that show's going to be good. The only reason he's taking David Lee Roth back is because he's a certified paramedic. <laughs> Might as well jump. Yeah, with a hip replacement? Yeah, let's, uh, let's see that. <laughs> I'm the ice cream man with half a tongue? Yeah, right. <laughs> I just thought of that joke. God bless you for laughing at that one, man. That'll give me the confidence to do it next show. Imagine Greg Allman on American Idol. What are you going to sing for us today, Greg? I ain't singing a fucking thing for y'all today. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm quitting the band. <laughs> You're from Atlanta? What's your favorite Allman Brothers song, sir? You're not actually from Atlanta, are you, sir? 
You're like some sort of Russian spy or some shit, ain't you? You're over at Lockheed stealing secrets and shit. Let me explain something to you, sir. If the draft comes back, okay, me and him and him and him, we're not fucking going. <laughs> You're going. You're going to wind up out in the desert. You get separated from your platoon. you got to work your way back to headquarters. Okay, your CO is not going to be some Foo Fighter listening fucker. He's going to be an old guy like me and him. You're going to come crawling in out of the desert. You're going to say, who's out there? And you're going to say, it's Private Bobby Brady, man, sir. Where are you from, son? Georgia, sir. What's your favorite Almond Brothers song? Blap, your ass is dead. <laughs> and some Iraqi fucker is going to jump up and go, whipping post, whipping post. You better get with the program. The Allman Brothers are the most important band that ever came out of Georgia. Now, there were black singers before the Allman Brothers were huge. Little Richard, Chuck, well, Ray Charles. But when the Allman Brothers showed up, white boys got to play. And that was big. Those New Yorker types and queen fuckers. We'd come down here and eat french fries and listen to the Allman Brothers. They'd bring a bunch of Democrats with them, and they started liking that band. That's why everything started picking up a little bit. You're a Southerner? Where are you from, ma'am? Mississippi. That ain't the South. Where in Mississippi are you from? Jackson? That's the South, ma'am. You're Southerner than I am. No, you're not, ma'am. Let me explain to you the difference between Mississippi and Georgia. We were an original colony, ma'am. Y'all just bandwagoners over there, ma'am. The name of the state was actually Mississippi, and y'all couldn't spell that fucker. Kept messing it up and everything. Jackson, Mississippi. The hottest place in the universe. That's close. Uh, I tell you, Columbus, Georgia, where I'm from, is technically the hottest place in America. That's why they put forts there. Burn them little fuckers up. You ever rode on the Natchez Trace? You did. Anybody ever ridden on the Natchez Trace? It's a road that Andrew Jackson took to, what you call it? Ah, whatever. When he went to the war, New Orleans, he went down there, try to keep it from flooding, fucking happened anyway. That's the boringest road I've ever been on in my life. It's like riding, it's like watching, looking at the same golf course 900 times. <laughs> Tiger Woods would be sick of that fucking road. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying. I'm starting to like you, ma'am. <laughs> Was this some sort of an arranged marriage or some shit? <laughs> Let me take a wild stab, ma'am. You were in the Peace Corps. You're a Democrat, aren't you? You're over in them Persia or somewhere, and somebody made you marry that fucker. <laughs> Is that what happened? Sir, this is a comedy club, sir. This ain't the serious club. You, you're a New Yorker, and you married a woman from Jackson, Mississippi. His manager must have really sucked a long time ago, ma'am. You've had this long to work on it, and you got him this far. What's your maiden name, Job? You got to be the most patient woman in the state of Mississippi, ma'am. Haley Barber ought to give you a damn plaque, ma'am. <laughs> oh, I like Mississippi. Louisiana, I ain't real excited about. Yeah, we bought Louisiana in 1803 in the Louisiana Purchase. Three cents an acre. I bet you if we sold that fucker today, we could triple our money. <laughs> this is feeding back. Well, we'll play you some stupid stuff. What? No, it's a joke, sir. We're not really selling Louisiana. Trust me, if we were selling it, George Bush would have done it a couple of years ago. <laughs> Biggest mistake that asshole ever made. Everybody's talking about Iraq. Yeah, my ass. You can't get water to a five-year-old kid in five days. What the fuck else difference does it make? You know what I mean? Alrighty. Bill Clinton would have been there in an hour and a half. <laughs> I'm worried sick about the Superdome. I'm worried sick about it. 
Some old dude didn't want to retire, so he set the old folks home on fire. Well, he knew it was him, because only he knew how, because he'd manned a flamethrower back at Guadalcanal. So he rigged a leaf blower to a gasoline can. He was sick of all the nurses and the raisin bran. He made sure the old ladies got out all right, and then he burnt the fucker down on Thursday night. He had a lot of balls for a man his size. He was kind of hard to catheterize. And daddy never was a bedpan man When he had to go, the shit hit the fan Had all the jello he could stand Yeah, granddaddy never was a bedpan man That's the only bluegrass lick I know Here's all the southern rock I know Play Freebird Play Molly Hatchet that kept mullets entertained for decades. That's our Michigan play. James Brown and the Southern Rock Band. Ha! Get up! Jeff Gordon's gay. Jeff Gordon's gay. At least that's what them ornery Earnhardt fans always say. Where he's using Vaseline on the 24 Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon's gay. He must be gay. I don't want to sit here and pick on gay people. They got enough problems without hillbilly piling on. <laughs> Americans, we're a little bit hypocritical about that. Go to church every Sunday. Do not judge. Do not judge. Love the sinner. Hate the sin. All sin is the same. But fuck those faggots. <laughs> there ain't a man in this room wouldn't suck a dick under certain circumstances. Not one. And you see them all swell up in the chair. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You do not realize your priorities in life yet, gentlemen, until you have found what you would gladly suck a dick over. Have you found yours yet, sir? Do you have children, sir? If somebody put a gun to your child's head, seriously threatening your child, you'd suck every dick on Roswell Road out there <laughs> to save their life, wouldn't you, sir? Of course you would. Why? Because you're a great father, sir. Mediocre dresser, great father. <laughs> now, every man in the room, I'd suck a dick. I'm a good father. Well, that sounds right, but it don't feel right, does it, sir? Four minutes ago, if I'd have told you I was going to talk you into this, you'd have told me I was crazy. Now you're going home a hero, sir. I'm going to be patting you on the back all the way home. He'd suck a dick to save a child. You're going to get laid later, sir. You're going to see my name on that sign out there in about six months. Well, I got laid last time I saw that A, so. Dave Chappelle won't get you laid. He was at the tabernacle tonight. You could have went there. It would have cost you $55. Now you got in on a coupon Listen to a Queens fucker holler at me all night. Suck a dick, save a life, sir. If the greatest father in America was going to die and you did it, he would live. If not, he dies. Is your selfish pride more important than his life? He's dead, ain't he, sir? <laughs> of course he's dead. You send flowers to the funeral, volunteer to Paul Bear, bring a covered dish, hug his mama, lie to her. <laughs> Say if there's anything we can do. Well, there's that one thing you could have done. You gotta be willing to suck a dick to save a job. You know, if they're 15 making D's in school, you know, maybe not. Well, we've lost the crowd. Here's the work. Here's a song about the worst business owner in the history of the state of Georgia. Crematorium for sale. We guarantee you it's been hardly used. The paper said we probably blew a fuse. We never learned how to turn the damn thing on. There's easy money laying around to be earned, and nobody really has to get burned. Crematorium for sale. Somebody's going to hell over this one. They closed us down, and now we're in jail 
Cause the neighbor said, what's that funky smell? Crematorium for sale. Somebody's going to hell over this one. And that one. And them over there. And that stack. Yeah, fine. I ran the crematorium. It was my fault. Fine. That was a weird case. That's the only time I've ever known where Noblesville, Georgia was begging for a great white concert. <laughs> it would have just cleaned up everything and it helped everybody. You know what I mean? God bless you, ma'am. She gets the jokes over there. God bless you, ma'am. See, if they had the great white concert, it would have had a big fire. It would have burned the bodies and saved everybody a lot of problems. God bless you, ma'am. <laughs> See, she's proof that this shit's funny. <laughs> turn this way. <laughs> I don't have that on an album yet, ma'am. It'll be on my next one. So. God bless you. I wish my wife would laugh at this shit as much as you do. I got married about, I don't know what, two years ago? Got married in Las Vegas. At the Bugsy Siegel Memorial Chapel over there. We were standing in Caesars. We went across the street in my tux. She's got her bridesmaid dress. And, you know, her got her, got her, maid, her wedding dress and my sister. And they got the bridesmaid shit and the flowers. And here we go up the sidewalk. Two Mexican fuckers offered me strip joint flyers <laughs> on the way to my own wedding. They handed her one. We postponed the wedding. Went and got a lap dance at the Pink Pony with Paco and his... We saw your scores on the SAT. We know you're gonna score a ton of TDs. We know you never made A's and B's. I ain't real sure you know your ABCs. But welcome, son, to Florida football. <laughs> Just trying to get that one in there, sir. Did you go to the University of Florida, sir? No. No? You did, ma'am? How come you, were you too good for Ole Miss? You should have went to Ole Miss. That way you could be married to Eli Manning now. Gator by marriage. You aren't? I don't ever want this crowd to ever show up on another one of my shows. <laughs> Individually, I like you. Thanks. But as a group, y'all don't gel worth a fuck. You know what I mean? So as a group, let's just get together and don't ever get together again for anything, especially anything that has to do with me. <laughs> Sir, if we were on Survivor, your ass would be voted out right now. <laughs> and we'd, we'd take the French prize. <laughs> we'll go to Taco Mac later, get some them wings to go with. You know what sucks? I got married about two years ago. My wife won't let me go in a Hooters. Well, I used to know a lot of Hooter dudes. Well, they never knew anything, but they come to the comedy show. Right? So, you know, we ain't going to no fucking Hooters. So fine, we'll go to Taco Mac and get wings. I'm sitting there eating damn wings. They got the American Hooter fucking bathing suit contest on the television right next to me. She's sitting there going, I can't believe you're watching this shit on the TV. I said, I begged him to change channels. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can't go to Taco Mac without getting a Hooter ass, you know, chew it. You know what I mean? I don't know why I'm looking at you here. <laughs> no. He paddled to San Diego. A wave took him out to sea, and he washed up on the beach at Waikiki. He's the only illegal Mexican in Honolulu. He's only been here 20 minutes and found him a roofing job to do. They're gonna let him stay, but 
but it's looking good cause they're already calling him Don Jose. Chin Cam Fong is Chin Ho. I love that shit. Well, we lost the crowd. What else? Let's have a round of applause for Tim Northern one more time. Back in the back. Give it up for him back there. And Andre Holloway, one more time. Give it up for Andre. Let's have a round of applause for the Queens guy and the Mississippi lady there. We realize you people are really Al-Qaeda. We realize that. But you can't come here and scare us. You know what I'm saying? We refuse to be scared. There ain't no way in hell a fucker from Queens married to a woman from Jackson, Mississippi. And they all went to Florida. It ain't going to happen. That's all bullshit. It's all Al-Qaeda. I'm surprised we're all still alive right now. So, good to have you all with us, though. Hey, we all watch God's Warriors. You see that? Christian Amanpour. Is she American? Or what, what's the deal on her? Christian Amanpour. She's just a little bit smarter than the rest of us. You know what I mean? Hell, I was an English major at Presbyterian College. Fuck her. I'm qualified to teach grammar. That'll show you the sick-ass society we're living in. Hell, I did everything I ever wanted to do anyway. Then come. Christian Amanpour is your one? Oh. That damn phone tap thing scared you there for a second, though, didn't that, Mount? Just tapping them damn phones and shit. All right. We'll do one more here. We got a CD just came out a couple of months ago. It's in the store. I don't have any here if you want to get one. Wherever you people are buying all these Ron White albums, go about an extra half inch into the Tim Wilson section right there. We got a DVD out. It's called Live in Atlanta. We got a website, timwilsonamerica.com. That's the name of it. It's my name and then the name of our country. So don't anybody be walking up going, is that timwilson.com? No, ma'am, fuck, it's timwilsonamerica.com. Let's have a round of applause for Mattress Man. Give it up for Mattress Man. Oh, fucker in the card shirt. There he is. The Mormons. There they are. Good to have you. One more time for the greatest father in the United States of America. Without batting an eye. Give it up for the little fucker who took more shit off me than anybody in six months. 22-year-old man. There he is. The old guy in the toupee. There he is. Buddy Holly, man. Round of applause for him. Buddy Holly. Killed in a plane crash, 59. Him and Big Bopper. Remember Big Bopper? Hello, baby. A chantilly lace and a pretty face and a ponytail going down. A wiggle and a walk and a jiggle and a talk and make the world go round. You know, that wasn't rap. <laughs> yeah, wiggle and a walk and jiggle and a talk. <laughs> make the world go round. <laughs> rap has fucked up R&B. I remember, you know, when a white kid could be out two in the morning in Amico, got the gas thing in. Car pull up, you know, celebrate good times, come on. You know, you're like, here comes another car. You know, I love music, any kind of music. You're sitting there, here comes Lou Rawls. You'll never find doom, doom, ba doom, doom, as long as you live. Some fucker from Queens <laughs> who married a woman from Mississippi. Now you're sitting there, it's 2 in the morning, you're at the Amco, and here's what you hear. <laughs> you think, oh, fuck, we're going to die. <laughs> and then you look over, and it's a white kid driving a car. You go, the hell? <laughs> oh, you know this shit's funny, sir. Sitting over there. 
kind of like working the Grand Ole Opry in the in the Apollo Theater in the same fucking night. This shit ain't easy to do. I guess I'm tired of Oprah Winfrey's ass telling me every move to make. I'm tired of Martha Stewart's ass telling me how to bake a cake. And I've just about had my fill of Dr. fucking Phil. Tired of looking at Tiger's ass and Shaquille O'Fucking-Neal. And Paris Hilton could fuck up a county fair. Just proof that you can be stupid and be a bill you fucking there. I'm tired of that Simon's ass telling people that they can't sing. I'd fire Donald Trump's ass for knowing every fucking thing. Jen and Brad and Angelina's ass, I'm about tired of looking at them. And I'm about ready for Hollywood's ass to run out of fucking film. I'm tired of everything on TV. Everybody loves Raymond, except for fucking me. I'm tired of that Lance's ass in France riding on a bike. I could pretty much give a damn what Tom Cruise's kid looks like. It'd be nice if hip hop's ass would finally learn to play three chords. And I'm about fed up with Nashville's ass and the Buy Me a Trophy Awards. Barry Bonds out hitting a bunch of fake home runs. And a fake ass Larry the Cable's ass and get her fucking done. I'd like to watch football's ass without worrying about T.O. And I'm resolved to tell W's ass where the fuck he can fucking go. I'll be the first, the second, telling the third world what the fuck they can fucking do. It'd be fun to watch Mel Gibson's ass get whipped by the Jews. I'm tired of the Al-Qaeda coming to the comedy show. Fucking with me and eating french fries in the fourth row. Kind of tired of my own ass singing this fucking song. There's a lot of people's ass I'm tired of, but the list is too fucking long. And I could be wrong. Oh, I could be wrong. God bless you. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Sam Wilson. Also give it up for Tim Northern, your feature. You guys have fun tonight. All right. We'll see you back here then, right? All right. Have a good night.